All right, here we are drawing with dad and I'm here today with Peter. Peter's here with me and we are going to draw. We're going to draw who? Brian Stokes Mitchell. Brian Stokes Should Mitchell. Uh, yeah, you're drawing right now. I'm drawing, you're drawing. So uh, we're going to draw Brian Stokes, Mich Brian, blah, 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 Brian Stokes Mitchell. And uh, Brian Stokes Mitchell is a Broadway uh, performer. He's an actor. Um, and uh, he is a really neat person. I had uh, some very brief interactions with him. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit uh, how that came to be and why and uh, some recent um, time spending uh, listening to his music. But uh, yeah, that's who we're drawing today. So uh, we're just gonna start by drawing some basic shapes, seeing if we can get kind of uh, uh, form down here that we like that kind of reminds us of him face that he's making. We've got a reference here in the top right corner, so he's looking kind of happy. His uh, smiley face and his curly hair. And uh, let's see how we do. So, um, Also, during this little video, I thought that we would not only talk about uh, Brian Stokes Mitchell, but he has a song that is absolutely beautiful. It's called New Words. And um, lately, I think it's been kind of fun to discuss songs with um, the kids as we draw together. Uh, we did uh, Walk Like an Egyptian. We've done uh, Can't Touch This, uh, Ice Ice Baby. Those were all kind of uh, pop music. This is um, not pop music, no, but it's a, <laughs> a beautiful song that uh, I was able to watch him perform uh, on a number of occasions. And um, now that I think of it, um, the first time that I heard of Brian Stokes Mitchell, I was uh, participating as a member of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And what's interesting, Peter has, um, well, let's see what you already know about this, Peter. What? When I started singing in the Temple Square Chorale, which is the training choir for the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, oh, um, wait, what? you were, in so Mom's Belly, corral? the Temple Square Corral. What is that? I just told everyone it's the training choir for the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. So, like, so I was singing in that. To the jazz? Not really. It's, okay. it's There's not a comparison there. Um, but I was working on uh, that training while... Um, you be fine. Okay. I was working on that training while... Um, you were still in mom's tummy I'm a child. and so you were not wow. born yet and towards the end of that experience uh, you were born in april and uh, i was actually really nervous that um, i would be somewhere performing unable to get a phone call or anything like that from your mom oh, no. and um and miss the whole thing and fortunately that didn't happen um we went into a regular appointment and we scheduled uh, a birth and that's how you came into the world um, but shortly after um, Brian Stokes Mitchell came to perform with the then Mormon Tabernacle Choir it's now called the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square but he uh, was scheduled to perform for the Pioneer Day concert and he sang oh, um, yeah. some of his more well-known songs he sang uh, we sang with him um, a number from Prince of Egypt, and he was one of the vocal performers in Prince of Egypt. And uh, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that he sang uh, The Impossible Dream during that concert. If not, he definitely did perform it to us. Um, it's a song from the musical Man of La Mancha. And uh, he also sang this song, New Words, um, either that July, which was when the Pioneer concert was, or um, he also came back and was the guest artist for us in uh, December. Um, Wait, was he so, the one? No, he wasn't the one with um, Sesame Street. No, that was years later. Uh, but he came to be the guest artist that year for the Tabernacle Choir Christmas concert and uh, was a phenomenal um, guest performer uh, once again. And it was a lot of fun to have him. So, um, 
And when he was there for the Christmas, that's that's when um, I just happened to be early at one of the, uh, we were supposed to be meeting. Uh, I was probably the first choir member out of 300 that was there and he was touring, I think, the conference center and we crossed paths. He noticed that I was drawing. I was just waiting for people to arrive and I was just drawing in my little sketchbook that I had with me. And, I think he uh, said something, oh, that's very neat, that's very beautiful, or something. just very, very yeah. kind. Yeah! So, anyway, so um, that was in the year that you were born, which was, gosh, 2008. Eight. So, quite a while ago. Um, yes. And uh, so he's been on, um, you know, I've, I've known of him since then. Uh, most recently, he was in Salt Lake City doing a concert with uh, Utah Symphony. This was his first um, concert, uh, large venue concert since the um, pandemic began. So uh, as we record this, we're kind of just getting out of, you know, mask mandates and stuff like that. And, just early. Um, yeah. Which he's got a very cool story. When, when he was performing, uh, and this was just last, uh, end of last month, um, he talked about getting COVID. He was one of the first people that he knew of to have COVID. And um, he lives in New York City. He's, like I said, he he's does. a performer, uh, Broadway performer. He lives near Broadway. So crazy. Anyway, so he was uh, one of the first kind of in the area to, to get that as far as he was concerned. And it was a scary thing. There were still a lot of unknowns. And, um, you know, this... This disease, COVID, uh, affects people's respiratory um, oh, abilities, and so yeah. he's really freaked out, thinking like, "Well, my whole life, singing is my life, and how am I going to sing if I can't, you know, breathe and all these things?" Anyway, long story short, um, it was during the pandemic that he became kind of well known for peeking out his uh, apartment window. And there was this moment where, um, I think it was like seven o'clock in the evening, everyone on the street would just stop what they were doing and they would bang pots and pans or something. And that was kind of a, a way for people to uh, give thanks to the um, frontline workers, um, you know, those that were you know, working in hospitals and, um, and that kind of a thing. So that's how they were kind of giving thanks. And um, he was recovering from COVID um, and he, as he was doing his vocal exercises that, uh, that he got into the habit of doing, he just figured, well, I'll just, I'll just do a little vocalizing out my window. And um, so all these people are gathered around for, um, you know, banging pots and pans or whatever. And he just starts singing the impossible dream. And, um, he did it once and I can't remember what got him to go back the second time, but it didn't take, I think it was a person that was like, are you going to sing? You know, some kind of a comment like that. And so he did and it became like a daily thing and um, his voice and, and really the song Impossible Dream is filled with hope and it's just a beautiful song and hearing him sing it is uh, quite a treat. So he kind of became famous as a uh, person that was just giving hope to, to folks in a, in a very, very dark and difficult time throughout the pandemic. So um, that's the kind of character he is. Uh, to seek him perform is to basically explore uh, joy through song. And, uh, and that's one of the great things about uh, Brian Stokes Mitchell. So anyway, what other questions do you have? You're a question asker. Um. I just think that he seems just like a really fun, nice guy. Well, he's a very, very fun, nice guy. Should we, let's dive into this song, how about? All right. Sound good? Sound great. So this, uh, and I'm, I'm not gonna remember some of the specifics about the song, I just know that he performed it um, uh, in a couple of um, concerts that I've been in. But it's called New Words, and um, the way that he tells the story is he kind of uh, became aware of the song when his son was born. And um, so let's go through it. I think that um, anyone listening will be able to understand the sentimental value in it. And uh, maybe we'll sing some of it. Maybe we'll talk some of it. Who knows? Yes. Um, anyway, the, uh, the first verse goes like this. Look up there, high above us, in a sky of black as silk. See how round 
like a cookie. See how white, as white as milk. Call it the moon, my son. Say moon. Sounds like your spoon, my son. Can you say it? New word today. Say moon. It's, all the verses are kind of like that, but you can kind of see this. Um, it's this interaction that he's having between him and obviously like a, an infant child learning child. Uh, new words, right? Um, what do you think? What, what sticks out to you in that verse, Peter? I just like how he, he's like likening the things and the words to the things like yeah. to make it easier for the child. Yeah, or he's, he's talking about this concept of the moon and saying the moon and it's like, oh, it's like, it's like this thing that you already know, mm -hmm. you know, kind of getting on the same level, right? Yeah. As, uh, he's the kid. So, anyway, the next verse um, goes on. Kind of along the same vein. Uh, we talked about moon, now we talk about the stars. It says, near the moon brightly turning, see those shining sparks of light. Each one new, each one burning through the darkness of the night. We call them stars, my son. Say stars. Go ahead, say it. Stars. Stars. Wow. That one is Mars, my son. Can you say it? New word today. Say stars. And uh, from that point in the song, he kind of transitions to uh, another little verse. It's uh, not the same structure, but he just talks about the stars and says, as they blink all around us, playing starry-eyed games, who would think it astounds us simply naming their names? So after this, this is where it gets really sentimental. So, which is really touching. Uh, next verse says, turn your eyes from the skies now. Turn around and look at me. There's a light in my eyes now and a word for what you see. We call it love, my son. Say love. So hard to say, my son. It gets harder. What do you think that verse means? I think that it means like, um, love, like to say that you actually love someone, like that can be like kind of hard, and, and and then like as you get older, it can get harder because like I don't know, it's like different, and you like know more stuff. I don't know. So the older you get, the more you know, but it becomes it's kind of an ironic case, right? It still becomes harder, maybe to say it. Interesting, isn't it? Well, as long as we practice saying it all our lives, maybe we can keep it from getting difficult to say. Yeah. Um, that verse is followed by the lines, New words today, we'll learn to say. Learn moon, learn stars, learn love. And then he kind of vocalizes a little bit. And, uh, and then this is a really touching part of the song where he just says, Learn moon, learn stars, learn happy, learn peace, learn love, learn puppy, learn friend, learn toy, learn sharing, learn hope, learn joy, learn caring, learn life is there for living and love is there for giving. Learn merrily, 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 merrily. Live and laugh and dream. That's it. Anyway. It definitely doesn't have the same uh, touch when you um, when you say it as poetry or whatever, but uh, the the lyrics are still really really neat. What do you what do you what sticks out to you in those last little uh, phrases that I just recited, Bud? I just think that life is there for living and love is there for giving, like go hand in hand, mm -hmm. because when you have life and like you know it's for living. You should always use your life to give love, as it says. Yeah. Why is, is that hard? Is that easy? That, yeah, that could be hard because of like things that other people do and that maybe you don't agree with or like just like different opinions and just differences in anything. And then like you can just 
like be stubborn with those differences. Yeah. And I think that being stubborn with those differences like doesn't help at all. And you, when you have like a whole life ahead of you, you might as well use it to love others and to give that love. Yeah, I agree with you. That's so good. I love the last line: live and laugh and dream. Um, you know what that reminds me of is that uh, phrase that uh, Coach Belvon talked about. You remember watching this together when he's, he's like, coach. he's the Wait, guy from yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. from North Carolina State, and he said every day you should think, you should laugh, and you should cry. Do you remember this? Yeah, that's we like a full day. Anyway, I love that, and, uh, and this kind of is along the same vein. Um, uh, living and dreaming are so, so, so important. And I think sometimes we get bogged down with the details of life and we we sometimes give ourselves permission to stop dreaming because we're just too busy putting out fires, you know? And uh, if that's ever the case, um, maybe you know, we gotta give ourselves permission to just slow down, you know, and dream a little bit. So anyway, love that song. One more story that I'll tell really quick. Um, when I was singing in the, uh, in the choir, um, as I mentioned before, um, a lot of times it would get hot in the choir loft. And so it was very common to see choir members um, bringing fans that they had either purchased or made to the choir loft and fanning themselves um, mm -hmm. just to generate a little bit of air. Um, so they didn't just get super hot and sweat and pass out and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I was super, super deliberate that my fan would be very special. Um, I decided to create a fan that looked like a ping pong paddle <laughs> and uh, I was very proud of it. And rather than um, calling it a ping pong paddle, it was my sing song fan. <laughs> and I just got a thrill for whatever reason. I just thought that the likelihood of singing song sounding like ping pong and uh, for that to kind of converge with my little fan was, was really clever. So anyway, I made two of them and they looked just like ping pong paddles um, from a distance. You couldn't tell the difference. I even used actual, like I used popsicle sticks for the, the handle, but the way that it was constructed, um, the popsicle sticks were kind of just extra detail and texture. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so I, I made those and every time we'd have a guest artist come, I would have the guest artist autograph my fan. And um, so that I did that for several years um, until it filled up and uh, I loved it, loved it. Well, he was the first guest artist to sign the fan and I, just because I was so touched with him um, and his performance, I took both of my fans and I decided I was gonna give him one of them um, as a gift from, you know, a fan, essentially, me being the fan, and then I'd have him sign the other one. And um, I don't know why, I just felt like, hey, I should give this to him, even though it was really special to me and I wanted it. Um, but I did, and I hope that he took it in the good, a good spirit. I, I understand that people that are, you know, autograph signings get things given to them, and they don't really have any place for it, or they can't really do anything with it, so. It may have been awkward, but um, I certainly enjoyed the opportunity of giving that to him. And uh, yeah, so he got the one fan and I got the one that was signed by him and carried that, used it uh, all around. I took it on tours and used it on buses and all that kind of stuff. So that is the story of Brian Stokes Mitchell and the Sing Song fan. Um, from the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, so. I never knew that you had made those or anything like that. I did, yeah. So, anyway, we are wrapping up. We've talked very little about the sketch, but it usually just follows the same pattern as far as, you know, getting the light sketching in and then going back in with dark lines. Looks like Peter's doing, <laughs> well, he's doing some shading right now with the, um, the skin and everything like that. And it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. You're looking good, bud. Oh well, yeah, so, it's yeah. Everyone gets better and better. So I, I really love that you guys try and do this with me. I like how this one is. Um, I don't know what to say. 
Oh yeah, it, I like the challenge of using a pen instead of like, oh, yeah. a pencil. Yeah, because you didn't erase. Because I can't erase. Yeah, that's good. And so good I'm doing like light lines. Yeah, sometimes I'll even erase. Let's see the final reveal here. Here's mine. Ta -da -da. Man of La Mancha himself. <laughs> and where's yours at? Let's see your, there, there you go. <laughs> nice, buddy. Well, thanks, Dad. Thanks for joining me today, kiddo. And I love you. Love you Let's too, Let's not ever make that hard to say. See ya. Bye.